Hello everyone and welcome back to our city. Specifically, welcome back to our two level roundabout interchange. I got some advice from Sherian and Sammy in my previous video about some improvements that we could make using lane mathematics. We'll go over what lane mathematics are and then go through some examples on our interchange and around the city, as well as show a few limitations I encountered when preparing for the video. I had never heard of lane mathematics prior to Sherian and Sammy bringing it up in the comments. So I did some googling and it brought me to Biffa, who I'm sure most of you already know, but if not, I have linked his channel in the description below. He's a very talented player, and I recommend you checking out his channel. I had seen a few of his videos, but he does use a lot of mods, so I don't watch them on a regular basis. From what I could tell, lane mathematics is similar to the principles of road hierarchy that we've already talked about. Its purpose is to help with the flow of traffic. Its primary application is for highway interchanges, and don't worry, the mathematics are extremely simple. The basic principle is the addition and subtraction of lanes. I've made a temporary four-lane highway off to the side of our city to walk everyone through using lane mathematics. If we are starting with four lanes and we have an off-ramp, we can think of that as subtracting one of the lanes, which means that after our off-ramp, we should have only three lanes on the highway. So let's do that real quick. Let's go down to the roads tool under the highway tab, and we will upgrade our four-lane highway to three lanes after the off-ramp. And so by stepping down to three lanes after the off-ramp, it changes the signage on our highway. The fourth lane now becomes a dedicated turn lane for the off-ramp and prevents traffic congestion due to through traffic trying to merge into the turning lane. Let's change that back to four lanes so that I can show everybody the change in the sign. The fourth lane right now is the uppermost lane on the highway segment that I'm showing you. And as you can see, it is either through traffic or right-hand turn for the off-ramp. By changing the highway after the off-ramp back to three lanes, you can see that the sign on the highway actually changes to a right-hand only turn. And so it works the opposite for highway on-ramps. Let's just move down our temporary highway over here. And we can think of that as the addition of a lane to our highway. If we start with three lanes on our highway and have an on-ramp, our highway after that should have four lanes. This provides a dedicated lane for traffic merging onto the highway and should reduce the interference with traffic already traveling on the highway. So let's again do that real quick. We will upgrade our three lane highway to four lanes after the on-ramp. For a quick recap, we started with four lanes on the right hand side, and then we had an off-ramp from our highway, which subtracted one of our lanes. Through the middle section of our temporary highway, we then had three lanes until we reached the on-ramp to the highway, which added another lane, putting us back up to four lanes. And that's the basics of our lane mathematics. We are keeping track of the lanes going on and off of our highway in and around our interchanges. So now obviously there are some limitations due to the number of lanes on a highway and the complexity of an interchange and also the tools available to us in the base game without any mods. Before we get to our two level roundabout interchange, we're going to start with something a little bit easier. And our first example is going to be one of the default cloverleaf interchanges. We'll start just on the right hand side over here and we can see that the highway approaching our interchange is a three lane highway. We then have an off ramp, which will subtract one of our lanes. So everything after that should be two lanes. So we'll upgrade that now. But uh, unfortunately, uh, almost right after that, we have a on ramp onto our highway. So we're back up to three lanes going over the overpass. And then we reach another off ramp from our highway. So we'll downgrade down to two lanes again, and then another on ramp. So we'll add an additional lane and we're back up to three lanes. So we can see that the, these changes on the default interchange are very minor, but what they have done is they have given us a dedicated turn lane for both of the off ramps on either side of the overpass, as well as a dedicated merging lane for traffic coming onto our highway. So I'll do that for all of these little segments that are in between the on and off ramp. It looks like the upgrades going in every direction should be uh, pretty much the same. And so that is just a simple application of lane mathematics to one of the default cloverleaf interchanges. And that should hopefully help with any traffic congestion that we might have. Our two level roundabout interchange is going to be a little bit more complicated than the cloverleaf interchange that we just went through but the application of our lane mathematics is going to be pretty much the same. We're going to start by looking at the highway that is entering our interchange, and we can see that it's also a three lane highway. We get to our first off ramp, which will subtract one of those lanes. So we'll bring our highway down to two lanes. And then again, almost immediately after that, we have a second off ramp. 
So our lane mathematics tells us that we should be going down to one lane. And <laughs> that is a pretty terrible idea. Not only do we not have a single lane highway, this is actually a highway ramp, which operates a little bit differently than a highway. But I don't think a single lane will be able to support the traffic going through the area here. So we're going to take a couple steps back and we're actually going to upgrade our highway just on the outside of the interchange from three lanes to four. Now I'm not anticipating any issues with traffic here. Not only are we on the outside of both of these interchanges, but we're actually on a stretch of highway where nothing's happening. So there should be no issues with traffic merging from three lanes to four. But now what that allows us to do is that allows us to go from four lanes to three lanes after our first off ramp and then down to two lanes going through the section underneath our two level roundabout. And I'm much happier with having two lanes of our highway going through the area. Now coming out the other side, we get to our first off ramp, pardon me, we get to our first on ramp. So we're going to go from two lanes now back up to three and then we get to our second on ramp. So we're going to go from three lanes to four. So I'll upgrade the tunnel here to four lanes for our highway. I'm going to extend it just a little bit into the tunnel. And now coming back out the other side, our lane mathematics are going to be exactly the same. So we're going to go from four lanes to three after the first off ramp, and then from three lanes to two after the second off ramp. And then from two lanes to three after the first on ramp and three lanes to four after the second on ramp. So as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the mathematics that we're doing is uh, very, very simple. It's basically addition and subtraction. And the only thing that you have to worry about is, is keeping track of everything. If you get a really complicated interchange, uh, it, it might be a little bit difficult to keep track of the lanes going through it. So I, what I recommend you doing is doing pretty much exactly what we just did and do it lane by lane. So first we did the lane going to the right here. And then, then we, after that, we did the lane going to the left. So then the next section that we're going to do is we are going to be doing uh, the lanes coming off to the east and the west. Um, so basically we're doing uh, lane accounting. You can think of it that way, just keeping track of everything. Um, what we have on the other side here, if we have something that's a little bit different, we have our on and off ramps going from our highway to our collector road and going to the uh, two level roundabout up at the top here. And so what we have is we have two single lanes. So we have our slip lane coming from the highway and then the off ramp coming from the second level roundabout. So we have two single lanes going into one single lane. So one plus one, and we should have two lanes right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade that to two lanes. So we have two single lanes now going into a double lane. Oh, actually, I want to upgrade that into a, a, a one way double lane. And then we have the opposite going out the other direction. So we have a single lane splitting into two single lanes. So what we should have is we should have a double lane splitting into two single lanes. And that's going to be exactly the same on the other side. We have two single lanes going into a single lane. So we should have two single lanes going into a double lane. And then on the other side, a double lane going into two single lanes. Now the last part of our interchange that we need to take a look at is the two level roundabout itself. Now this one, it's a little bit complicated. Um, you can see here that we have uh, lots of on and off ramps. So we have an on ramp here and an off ramp, on ramp, off ramp, and it goes all the way around. And it pretty much it neutralizes itself. So we have a plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one, plus one, minus one. So uh, the, the roundabout itself is, is basically neutral and it is only a single lane right now. So what we do have going around the roundabout though, is we do have some cars that tend to travel along the roundabout a little bit before they take their off ramp. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to actually upgrade this to two lanes. And what that does, if we take a look at the uh, signage on our highway, is that provides uh, the cars a turning lane and a travel lane. So the inner lane that goes around the uh, inside of the loop here is going to be our travel lane. And then the lane on the outside should be our turning slash travel lane for the cars. And I think that will help traffic go a little bit smoother through the area here. And here are the results after applying lane mathematics to our interchange. I think the traffic is flowing a little bit smoother than what we had before, for the most part, at least anyway. But I actually wasn't expecting that much of a difference. The amount of traffic and traffic issues that we had before were very minor, so any changes that we did make would have shown very little improvement, if anything at all. 
The main benefit of us applying our lane mathematics now is that as we continue to expand our city and the amount of traffic increases going through our interchange, we should have fewer traffic issues than what we would have had have we not already applied our lane mathematics. Now, I did run into some issues as I was applying lane mathematics, and most of that comes from the game itself. As many of you know, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to get the AI to do exactly what you want it to do, especially when it comes to traffic, so we did run into some issues. Now these issues could have easily been fixed had I been using mods. I think there's a mod called the Traffic Manager mod, where you can actually dictate what lanes your cars travel on and change the signage on the highway, which would uh, solve the issues that I did run into. Uh, but I actually managed to come up with some fixes not using any mods. So I'll show everybody those right now. And we're going to start by going off to the side over here, where we have the highway going into the four lane collector road. And if you remember, we had the two single lanes going into a double lane and the double lane going into two single lanes. But if we look on the left hand side here, we can see that the arrows on the double lane here, we actually only have one lane now turning into the uh, four lane collector road. And the second lane is actually now a U-turn <laughs> going back onto the highway. So that's essentially uh, eliminating the two lane going into the four lane collector road here. And it's essentially now just a single lane. So what we're going to do is we are actually just going to upgrade that down to a three lane highway. And if you can see now, we can see that the uh, left hand lane and the center lane are now turn lanes into the four lane collector road. And then we actually have the center lane and the right hand lane are U-turn lanes, but I'm not expecting any traffic to actually need to take that U-turn. So uh, the main reason for doing this was now having two lanes going into the four lane collector road, which is what we originally wanted to have. So we'll apply that to the other side over here too. We'll just upgrade this to a three lane road. And obviously that breaks our lane mathematics, but it fixes the problem that we did actually have to begin with. So I'm okay with uh, breaking the rules a little bit here. The next limitation that I encountered has to do with traffic going off of the highway onto the four lane collector road. If we take a look at our traffic routes, we can see that not all of the cars are following the pathways that we want them to. The design of our interchange is to have traffic go along the highway and take the slip lane to go onto the four lane collector road. But instead, what some of them are doing is they are traveling a little bit further and then going up the ramp onto the two level roundabout and then immediately back down onto the four lane collector road. Now, the reason why that is an issue is that when vehicles take this corner here, they tend to slow down a little bit and if there's any vehicles already in the roundabout passing by that point at the same time, they actually interfere with one another and it causes a little bit of traffic congestion. And now, unfortunately, I could not figure out why the vehicles were doing that, why they weren't just taking the slip lane to go to the four lane collector road, um, but I did figure out how to fix it. Now, unfortunately, what we have to do is we have to downgrade our four lane highways back to three lane highways. So I'll do that on either side of our interchange here. And now I know this is going to break our lane mathematics again. So I'm not actually going to change any more lanes within the interchange itself. I'm, I'm pretty happy with how everything else is working. But for some strange reason, um, having a four lane highway on the other side of the interchange, on either side of the interchange, actually causes the traffic to take lanes that we don't want them to take for whatever reason. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to resume the game here. And then we're going to check out our traffic routes once more. And we can see now the cars are no longer taking the ramp up to the second level roundabout and then back down to the four lane collector road. And I think that'll be a good time to end this episode. It's important to remember that if you're going to make any changes to your city, especially when it involves traffic, that you double check and make sure that the changes that you've made are actually doing what you want them to do. Our lane mathematics worked out for the most part but we did run into some limitations due to the game itself, but they were easily overcome by adjusting our lane mathematics just a little bit. Thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't hesitate to leave a comment or a like down below, or even to subscribe for more City Skylines content in the future.